Good morning, everybody. It's Rose, and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan, and another What I Ate in a Day video. Today, we are doing another one of these I ate like so and so for a day videos. So, last time I did this, I ate like Candice from Edgy Veg for a day. You guys seem to really, really enjoy it. I had so much fun with it, so I'm gonna link that video down below. But today, I thought it would be fun to eat like a non vegan influencer for a day. I feel like it would not only be entertaining, but also informative for those of you that are maybe interested in a vegan diet, but you're not really sure how to swap out certain things. I'm gonna show you guys some ways that you can uh, swap out certain ingredients to make the meal vegan friendly. Definitely let me know down below who you want me to eat like next. You can leave vegan influencer names or non-vegan influencer names. I definitely will check it out. So today, as you can see by the title, I am going to be eating like Jen M for a day. For those of you that don't know, she is a beauty, fashion, lifestyle, YouTuber, Instagrammer, influencer. <laughs> And she is someone I've been following for a long time and I am I'm a fan, okay? I am a fan. She is so adorable. Uh, she's actually Korean American. I'm Korean Canadian. So anyways, I will be eating like Jen Im for a day. She has a video where she eats Korean meals for a day. And um, these are definitely meals that I would eat as well. And also meals that can be easily veganized. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Let me know down below. Let's go have breakfast. <laughs> All right, so for breakfast, Jen eats what she calls a brekkie bowl. So I made my own vegan version of this brekkie bowl. So we're gonna get started with some medium firm tofu. So instead of using egg, we are actually going to use tofu and make it kind of taste like an egg. So yeah, so we're gonna take a pan. We're gonna add a bit of oil. I added quite a bit because I wanted to make sure the tofu didn't stick to the pan and it cooked really nicely. So I am just cooking up the tofu. So we are gonna let that cook. And while that is cooking on medium high heat, we are gonna chop up some broccoli. So we're gonna chop that up into nice bite-sized pieces. And of course we are going to wash the broccoli so you're not eating any dirt, okay? And to quickly cook the broccoli, all I'm doing is taking a large bowl and adding our broccoli, and then we're gonna dump some hot water into the broccoli. So you just have to boil some hot water in a kettle and then just pour that in, and it's gonna start cooking pretty quickly and turn a really nice green color. So I'm just gonna pour that in and then just cover it up to allow it to just cook through, and then we can check on our tofu. So the trick to cooking the tofu nicely is to just leave it alone, okay? So I like to cook it for about, I don't know, three to five minutes on each side on medium high heat until it turns into a nice golden brown color like this, okay? So if it's undercooked, it's gonna stick more to the pan. So you just wanna make sure that you are cooking it properly and uh, just being patient, essentially. So there you have it. There is that beautiful color that you're looking for. So in order to make our tofu taste a little bit like egg, we are going to add some Himalayan black salt, also known as Kala Namak. This is very frequently used to kind of make your dishes have a bit of an eggy taste. So I decided to just sprinkle a little bit of it on to my tofu. Next, this part is optional, but I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder on top as well. And then of course, allow the tofu to cook through and uh, become golden brown on the other side. And then I'm going to take some brown rice in a bowl and I'm going to add a little bit of tamari or soy sauce. And we're also going to add some sesame oil. And this is quite often what I used to eat when I was a kid as well, just mixing rice with soy sauce and sesame oil. This alone is really tasty. <laughs> And we're gonna make a little room for the broccoli. Now we can uh, place our cooked broccoli into that bowl as well. And of course, let's top with our tofu egg, if you can call it that, or pan fried tofu. And I know it looks plain. I know you're just thinking it's just tofu, but I swear to you guys, this really gave me a very similar feeling like I was eating egg. I think the trick is to use medium firm tofu because the consistency is very similar to an egg. So we have that nice crispy outer layer and then the inside is very, very soft and it really reminded me of an egg. Also, an optional ingredient you could add on top is some avocado just to replace some of that fat from uh, the egg yolk that you would normally get. 
but instead I am using just a little bit extra of the sesame oil, uh, mainly because my avocado was not ripe yet. That's the only reason why, okay? But uh, this is super delicious. I heavily, heavily enjoyed this. I know it looks plain and it doesn't look that exciting, but it was very exciting indeed for my taste buds. And on the side, I'm actually eating this with a little bit of vegan kimchi, and that was so good. Highly recommend. Oh, guys, that was actually so delicious. It was on point. It was exactly what I needed for breakfast. You guys know I love me a savory breakfast, so that was like perfect. I definitely want to eat that again many more times. And guys, the black salt actually made such a difference. It really, really tasted like egg. The tofu really tasted like egg, but not in like a gross way because the reason why I, I'm a little bit weary about using black salt sometimes is because I don't like the sulfur smell, but when I added it just to the plain tofu, it really kind of just gave me that feeling that I was eating an egg and the fact that I had perfectly cooked the tofu nice and golden brown on each side made it really like eggy. So highly recommend trying it out. Try to use medium form tofu because it really gives that kind of similar experience. Really good. I'll see you guys at lunch. All right, folks, it is lunchtime. We are going to make doenjangjigae. Doenjangjigae is a Korean fermented soybean paste stew. <sighs> This is like one of the most traditional Korean dishes and it's definitely a big comfort food of mine. So very excited and it is very, very simple to make it vegan friendly. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And basically other than making it vegan, I'm gonna make it pretty much exactly like the way that Jen is making it in her video. So let's go. All right, let's make one of my favorite dishes ever which is doenjangjigae. So we are going to take some dried kelp. So this is going to create a nice kelp broth. We stick the dried kelp into our water and we have to bring this to a boil. Now, alternatively, you could use kelp powder. This is the powder form of kelp. Surprise, surprise. So this is a quicker way to make a kelp broth, but if you want a more deeper flavor, I would recommend using the dried kelp. So let's start chopping things. <laughs> We're gonna chop an onion. Now you want your onion in chunks, kind of like this, okay? Like big chunks. We want everything in big chunks. That's just how you do doenjangjigae. So uh, Jen uses potato in her doenjangjigae. This isn't something I use very frequently. I surprisingly eat very little potato for a vegan, uh, but uh, potato is very commonly used in doenjangjigae and it is very good in doenjangjigae. I don't know why I don't uh, eat it very often in doenjangjigae. How many times can I say it? Doenjangjigae. So we just wanna chop the potato into, again, chunks, bite-sized chunks. We are also going to chop some zucchini to add into the doenjangjigae. I don't have any um, measurements because I'm not measuring, okay? But I do have a recipe for doenjangjigae um, on my YouTube channel and also in my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook. So I'll link both of those below. And there you have it, guys. There's onion, potato, zucchini. Now with the kelp broth, you wanna bring this to a strong boil. And when it comes to a boil, you wanna turn it down to a simmer. I'm just gonna cover it up with the lid to allow this to happen faster. In the meantime, we could also chop our soft tofu. So Jen uses soft tofu in her doenjangjigae and that is a message I approve. I fully support the use of soft tofu in doenjangjigae or any other stew. Soft tofu is the bomb. Guys, you must try it. It's so good in a stew because it just melts in your mouth. It's like a custard, you know? After we've chopped the tofu, we can also chop some green onions, another very common ingredient used in doenjangjigae. And then I'm going to chop a jalapeno pepper. Now Jen uses a serrano pepper. I don't actually know the difference, my friends. I couldn't find serrano pepper. So we're using jalapeno. I don't think there is a big difference. Maybe there is, I don't know. So at this point, your water and your kelp has been uh, very nicely infusing together. So I usually like to uh, do this for about, I would say 20 minutes to really allow the kelp flavor to infuse into the water. Now, if you use kelp powder, you don't have to really wait at all. But again, you won't get the same kind of deep flavor, I think. Or maybe that's just what my mom tells me. I don't know. Anyways, we want to scoop out the kelp. And I kind of like to eat the kelp 
not gonna lie i think it's probably healthy so i just eat it but uh, i scoop that out and then i'm gonna add some minced garlic in here at this point i've also turned up the water again to a medium high ish so we're gonna kind of reboil this okay so now this is the ingredient that we need this is twinjang <laughs> It looks disgusting, I know, but this is fermented soybean paste. This is the magical ingredient. It is pungent. It smells probably not that pleasant, but it is absolutely a must-have in Korean cooking. And you better get used to it if you like Korean food because you're going to smell it a lot. It's so good. It's kind of like a very, very, very strong miso, uh, but not a miso, but kind of a miso, just to give you a little context. So as you've seen, I've scooped up a pretty big spoonful of doenjang and added it into the water and now I'm just stirring it in and just allowing that to kind of melt into that broth. Now, doenjang is very, very strong. It's very salty. So uh, just be careful how much you add in the initial stage. You can always add more later, my friends. So just keep that in mind. So just mix that paste into the broth and then you can add in the onions and potatoes. By the way, I'm just following the order that Jen used in her video. Normally what I do is I uh, cook up the onions and the other vegetables first in the broth and then add the paste. Now, I don't know if any of that makes a difference. So do whatever you want, my friends. I don't think the order makes a big difference. So we brought this to a boil. And now once the uh, potatoes have cooked for a few minutes, because the potatoes obviously take, you know, a little bit of time to cook, we can add in the zucchini. And the peppers. Obviously, if you don't like spicy, leave that out. And Jen didn't add this in her stew, but I had some enoki mushrooms that I needed to use up and I love enoki mushrooms in doenjang jjigae. So I'm going to add a bunch in there. I don't know if I'm allowed to deviate from the original recipe, but I'm gonna do it anyways, okay? It's my video. And then we're also gonna add in the tofu. Now, you just wanna make sure that you don't overflow your pot. I do this very frequently with twin jang jjigae. So usually what I do is I start off with less broth than I think I need. So maybe about half the pot with the broth and then add in the veggies. And by the time I add in the tofu, it's pretty much filled up. So yeah. So this time around, I actually used about half the tofu that I cut up because I just couldn't fit anymore into the pot. But the trick is to keep the leftover tofu in a container in the fridge. And then the next day when you heat up the leftover tenjang on the stove, you can add in that tofu. And then you have tofu again. More tofu. Yay! And once the tenjang is pretty much done, we can add in our chopped green onions. All right, we have the doenjang jjigae in a nice bowl. We are going to top with some more green onions as Jen did. And there you have it. Now, normally I eat it straight out of the pot. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, but uh, this time I put it in a nice bowl as Jen did, okay? So there you have this beautiful, delicious, healthy stew. And we are going to eat that with some uh, brown rice. And this is genuinely one of the most comforting meals I could ever think of. It is so delicious. I loved the potato in there. I'm definitely going to add potato into my doenjang jjigae in the future as well. So there you have it, my vegan version of doenjang jjigae. And I wanted a little dessert, so I'm having a few slices of orange, even though Jen does not eat this, but I wanted it. Okay, so I'm having it. All right, my friends, it is dinner time and Jen makes what is called takgalbi, which is a spicy Korean stir fried chicken dish. And she makes lettuce wraps with it. And instead of chicken, we are using my new favorite thing ever, which is soy curls. So soy curls are basically dehydrated soy meat, I guess you could describe it. And all you have to do is add some water to rehydrate and then you just flavor it and cook it however way you want. And it has never disappointed me. I have tried multiple recipes with this and it is 
the bomb. So we are going to uh, allow the soy curls to rehydrate and then we are going to take a uh, small bowl and we're going to add the sauce ingredients. So the first very important ingredient we are using is Korean red pepper paste also known as gochujang. Gochujang is one of my favorite ingredients and a very very important ingredient in Korean cooking. Highly recommend. Okay, so the next ingredient I wasn't sure about because Jen says verbally in the video rice vinegar, but then the text shows rice wine. So I decided to mix both rice wine and rice vinegar. We are using mirin, which is sweet rice wine, and I use it often for cooking. And then I'm gonna also use rice vinegar. So you can't go wrong when you add both, right? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, next I'm also going to use some kochukaru, which is red pepper flakes. And then we are also using some tamari or soy sauce. The next ingredient, of course, it's a Korean dish, so garlic is a must. We're gonna add some minced garlic in there as well. And then mix that well. Once that sauce is nicely mixed together, we are going to slice some onion. We are gonna do it lengthwise. All right, let's check up on the soy curls. As you can see here, they have rehydrated and um, they are ready to pretty much, uh, you know, be cooked. <laughs> so you basically want to drain out the water and also squeeze the uh, soy curls just a little bit to get the excess water out. And then we are going to add the onions into the soy curls as well. And then let's add the sauce. And let's mix this well, guys. Make sure every little soy curl is coated nicely. So I mixed that very well, made sure everything was very well coated, and then I covered this up and allowed it to marinate for 20 minutes as Jen recommended. Now you could probably get away with just doing 10 minutes, I'm not gonna lie, cause I don't know, soy curls, I feel like it already soaks up the flavor pretty quickly, but I did 20 minutes. I mean, it can't hurt, right? Now, in the meantime, we can prepare our lettuce wraps. All you have to do is chop up the end of the lettuce and then wash it. And that's it. I'm using romaine lettuce uh, because romaine lettuce is just what I normally use. It lasts long in the fridge and it's nice and crunchy. So that's what I use, but you can use whatever lettuce you want. And then the next very important ingredient is a seasoned soybean paste, also known as samjang. As you can see here, this is kind of gross. This is very old. So I'm going to re, how do I say? I'm going to revitalize it, bring it back to life. You can actually make samjang with uh, doenjang and um, gochujang. And I've actually done a recipe video where I show you how to make this dipping sauce. So I am going to uh, link that video down below in case you want to make this at home. But you can also buy this in the Korean supermarket, as you can see here. And this is a very old container. We've had this in our fridge for years. So it's dried out a lot, but it hasn't gone bad. So I decided to try and revamp it. I'm going to add just a little splash of mirin, which is that cooking, uh, that sweet cooking wine that we used earlier. And I'm just gonna add some splashes of that. It can't hurt. <laughs> so we're just gonna mix it. We're basically just rehydrating it. You could probably just add water as well. And here I'm also adding a little bit of sesame oil and mixing that. And that pretty much did the trick. You know, that's it. <laughs> so there you have revitalized, revamped uh, samjang. And that's gonna be our sauce for the wraps. And now it is time to cook our delicious spicy soy curls. So into a large pan, we're gonna add a little bit of oil and we're just gonna heat that up on medium high heat. All right, and when the pan is heated up, we are going to add our soy curl mixture into the pan and we are just gonna cook it. So I like to kind of cook it for a few minutes and then just kind of mix it around once in a while. And um, I just cooked it until the soy curls kind of started to char a little bit, just a little bit. And um, that's kind of my indicator that they were done. But honestly, the great thing about soy curls or plant-based food in general is that you don't really have to worry about, you know, something being undercooked, especially when it comes to these soy curls, you can pretty much just eat it raw so you can just cook it however long you want and you won't get sick amazing beautiful fantastic and once everything is cooked of course we're going to top with some chopped green onions and what i loved about jen's video is that she is also a green onion obsessed person which is basically me 
I basically top everything with、uh, green onions because green onions are the best. They're amazing. Add as much as you want. Alright, I think they are ready to eat. Oh my god, we have plated it. We have added more green onions on top. And there you have a spicy Korean soy curl stir fry. Oh my god, my mouth is literally watering as I'm doing this voiceover. And of course, we're gonna eat that with some rice and the lettuce wraps. And of course, the samjang for the lettuce wraps. And I'm just gonna quickly show you how I make the wraps. So I just take a big leaf of lettuce, and then I'm going to add plenty of the、uh, soy curls. And then we can add a little bit of that sauce, just a small amount of the sauce, and then a little bit of the rice. And we're gonna wrap it up and then just throw it in your mouth, okay? Hopefully, it can fit in your mouth. It should. If not, it'll get messy. Oh my god, you guys. So that was seriously one of my new favorite meals. I'm going to make that all the time now. That was so good. <gasps> I have some left over for tomorrow. My roommate tried it. She's not vegan. She enjoyed it. She thought it was really good. So, yay! And having the lettuce wraps. Oh, Just perfect, guys. Guys, lettuce wraps are definitely one of my favorite ways to get in like tons of vegetables. Move over salad, don't need you, okay? I need I need those wraps. I'm so glad I did this because this is a great way for me to try out different recipes and you know, discover new meals. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of me eating like Jen Im for a day. If you enjoyed this video, of course, leave me a little comment, okay? Let me know what you thought, and of course, give this video a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you guys want to check out Jen's channel, I'll link her down below as well. Let me know also who I should eat like next. You can leave vegan influencer names or non vegan influencer names. Or maybe like celebrities. I don't know. Okay? Anyone. Anyone. Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.